I'd like you to tell us about how the uh, you got together the, the members for the current band. Very quickly. Uh, how long did it take you? Two weeks. And did you do this all in New York? Yeah. And who are they? Oh, God. <laughs> Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> You've been, you've been asked for this one a few times. Yeah, but I mean, I can get all their names written out and all that. Okay. It's just boring. Uh-huh. Well, how did you meet up with them, though? Just like, uh, just through, like, word of mouth, because we didn't want to, like, advertise in the papers and all that, because you get every cunt in the world coming up, so just word of mouth. Word of mouth. People we knew. And they were the best of the bunch. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was like, what was your criteria for ch selecting the band members? Talent, rather than looks. Simply as musicians? Yeah, absolutely. And w have these guys been uh, musicians for a long time now? Are they very, in what sort of bands? I'll have to ask them, I, I, I wouldn't read voicing opinions for them. Mm -hmm. Ask them individually. Mm -hmm. They've all got work in the notes now. Mm -hmm. Tenure tuck is a good note. Yeah, more. We'll sign up. Are you going to continue with the same band for quite a while then? For the moment. They'll be old tomorrow. <laughs> well, how long will this tour last for the time being? Uh, well, just there's a few more gigs and a few things to do, yeah. We should be back in America by the 15th. And, uh, Will you do dates in America when you get back there? Eventually, yeah, but like straight into the studio to finish off our album, which is far more important. So that's basically the material is all set aside for that? Oh, yeah. It's, it's almost finished. Oh, the album itself is almost finished? Yeah. Hmm. The back of, no, not the back of it, the rest of the band members were nothing but the uh, suits and the bow ties. Whose idea was that? <laughs> that, is and that says it all. That says it all. Can I have a decent cigarette, for chance? Oh. I don't want to do that. What? Deliberately, because I mean, people pay more attention these days to the clothes you wear rather than anything else. So to fucking come out in dicky bows and look like a cocktail jazz outfit was very, very wacky and good. What? And, and it like I mean the look on people's faces the first night they were that they trotted out was they thought they'd gone to see Barry Manilow. Uh, and I liked that. But you yourself weren't in a suit and necktie. No. You wouldn't get me in one of those. Why's that? Well you would, but not in my size, they don't seem to fit. <laughs> I'm quite plump these days. You don't look it. <laughs> I'm plump by my standards. Hmm. The stage arrangements differed from the album arrangements. What was the intention behind this? What? The stage arrangements differed from the uh, uh, album arrangements of the songs, that is. Oh, I mean, like, the whole thing about doing a song live is, is not to totally imitate the, what you've recorded on record, but to improve on it. And whatever suits the uh, atmosphere at the time, I mean, that's, that's what the music's about, isn't it? Hmm. So the, the arrangements on stage are always a bit more beefed there's up. A loose, there's a looseness. I mean, we could go strictly according to the record, but mm -hmm. well, that wouldn't be much fun night after night, and I'd recommend that the people buy the record then in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stage there, eh? Record mm. 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 uh, the tour. Now, this time around. Uh, what would you mean by that? I'd say everything we've ever done is commercial. Mm-hmm. always had that intention of, of, of making a very commercial product. Uh, no, it's, I make records to sell to as many people as I, as I can. I mean, <laughs> This, that's my business. If, if I don't do that, then I'm a fool. I don't believe in cults and all that nonsense and art for art's sake. I want to get the message across. 
Do you think you basically haven't changed the philosophy then behind no, what you're doing? No, no, no. He's been given to believe that in the song, this is not a love song. You say you're going for a more commercial uh, uh, type thing. It's, uh, it's done in a very poppy way, but the lyrics are well wicked. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Read the lyric sheet, buy the record, and find out for yourself. Well, I think that's, that's what his interpretation is. He took it at face value. Ah, uh, well, no, it goes much deeper than that. Yeah, all my lyrics do. That's that's what I write them for. That's why I spend so long on them. Well, I've been writing for a long time. 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 Hmm. You haven't decided yet? No. I mean, you know, we're loose about those kind of things. Whichever's the best. Yes, I'm huh? I hate limiting myself to schedules. I really, I can't stand it. I hate getting up at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's an actually get. I'm not sure why I have to do that. Why do you uh, want to use the Japanese concerts for a live album? Because we're here, and we're doing them live. We won't have much time in the next few months to be doing any live stuff, so we might as well do it now. Yeah, the last uh, concert we did in LA before we came here. So it'd be really good just to compare the two things. Mm. I mean, us in America and us here, mm. the audiences are very different. Mm. Obviously. The Japanese uh, uh, fans didn't quite know how to react to you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What do you They'll think? learn. What do you think was behind that? I don't know. Uh, suspicion, uh, lack of education. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, uh, it's my first time here. Then they're more curious than anything. And I, 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 I can't. I can't explain it. It's weird. It's, I feel like I'm being observed more than anything. Is this the first time that's happened to you? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, when I first started, it was very much the same thing in England. It was very much the same, you know, kind of like, God, what's he doing? <laughs> I mean, you know, when I jump into the audience, they all, like, run away from me, like I'm about to kill them. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. But, I mean, uh, what other gigs we've done here, uh, uh, but what the other towns, the other towns that we've done, I can't remember their names. Uh, but the wacky one, it was just total, absolutely out the crowd, they went bizarre. In Japan? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they went wild. Oh, was, it was great. Hmm. Or is it Nagoya? Osaka? Osaka. Yeah. Osaka uh, Kofi In Tokyo, feel the need to pretend to be more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's enough uh, information here. Uh, yeah, but they don't know how to use it. <laughs> the thing is, yeah, they collect all these bits of information and they, 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 they don't seem to connect them together. Hmm. Well, that's, that kind of overlaps with what he was saying. He says they know that the uh, John Lydon from the Sex Pistols and John Lydon from PAL, and so they never the twain shall meet. Mm -hmm. So they don't know which one they're going to come up against when you come So I gave them both. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've done Sex Pistols songs live here, mm -hmm. and that shocks them in mm -hmm. Tokyo. Very much. Mm. And well, the last gig, uh, I don't think they even recognised them. You know, that mm. this was the total pill audience. They, they weren't aware of that past. Mm. Whereas in the other towns, they were. Mm. Did you try to feature more of the Sex Pistols? No, I mean, there? I just did it because I wrote the songs anyway, right? Mm. I mean, and I thought they fitted in quite well. Mm. Uh, there's no great big philosophy behind that. Mm. They're my songs, mm. I'm entitled to them and I will at my leisure. But I won't do them in America. Oh, really? <laughs> no, because they demand it there, you know? So you and, won't and do that's it. So I won't do it. <laughs> Whereas you don't think they expect it here, so you do it? Yes, exactly. Is I won't right? ever be told what to do. Is that right? Yes. Huh. Because you don't, maybe, don't see it on the surface, but they're actually demanding that you play the pistol stuff here, probably. Well, I'm not aware of it, so that's <laughs> fine by me. 
What you don't know doesn't hurt you. So you don't dislike doing the pistol summary? No, of course not. I just don't like to be demanded of it. Right? I, I'm a very awkward person like that. I've all my life been thrown out of schools and ended up in jail for that kind of thing. Mm. But I stick to my guns. <laughs> Question, but what were the pistols to you? Me. And only me. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. no. It was all right. I mean, I never thought it would take off, and actually it never really did until the day the band ceased to function. Hmm. And that's when it sold in huge amounts outside of England. Well, yeah. It was d very misunderstood, and, you know, people paid more attention to the manager and his bullshit than the band who were actually writing and doing the songs. What was his part in it, though? Hindsight. Hmm. The press had a complete freedom. They could write whatever they wanted and we denied nothing. Hmm. There was no clever scheme. There was no scam. There was none of that bullshit that's been written. Hmm. You know, incidents happen, yeah, but you know, they're, they're not planned that way. You don't plan to go on television and swear because the man is so damn rude to you that that's all he deserves. Hmm. You, you, they were rude to you? Oh, yeah, very. And usually still are. Mm. Well, what, what TV interviews can be a real pain, you know, because they like to put you on the spot. Mm. And I can't be put on the spot. I've mm. got a wicked mouth. <laughs> Where did this thing about the great rock and roll swindle uh, originate? That came after. Oh, that when was I, when I quit. That was Malcolm then fucking about. Just that was his, was it the whole yeah, thing was his own There was, was no speech. sex pistols at that time. Hmm. And then he just made up the whole thing about rock and roll swindles and how it was yes, a whole plan. Yes, hindsight. Hmm. Very, very easy thing to do, hindsight. Hmm. It's just a shame that people paid more attention to that than, you know, the relevant bits and pieces. Was that your first experience as a professional musician? My first experience of professional con artists like Malcolm McClellan. Um, had you been performing before that, though? No, never. Never? No. But you wrote the songs for the Pistols? Yeah. And you'd had no musical experience no. before that? No. <laughs> then how did you first come meet up with music then? It's very easy. I mean, you're given three chords to work with. God's sake. Mm -hmm. Anyone could do it, but my lyrics were slightly very much different than the norm. Mm -hmm. So did you plan on, you never plan on being a musician even when you were a kid? No. Pure chance. I mean, like, like it was Bernie Rhodes who spotted me, the Clash's manager. Uh -huh. And he said, get in, get in. He looks like he could be a singer. Because I had uh, this t-shirt on and I hate Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what were you doing and at the time? And he thought, wow. Because, mm. you know, that was a... Uh, I don't know, apparently an outrageous thing to do at the time. I mean, to me, it was just very natural. I really did hate them, and I didn't mind declaring it. Well, what were you doing at the time? Nothing. I was unemployed. Mm -hmm. How old were you? Uh, about 17. 17. And what did you plan on doing? What sort of job? I had no future. Mm. I had no idea what I'd be doing. Mm. So it was luck that I got into this business, so I was very grateful for that. Hmm. Are you and ever since then I've enjoyed nothing more than making records. Hmm. Are you still on good terms with uh, Bernie Rhodes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Bernie very well. What, what sort of jobs were you doing before he spotted you? Uh, I worked in a sewerage farm. Oh, what, what farm? Sewerage farm. Sewerage farm? Where they filter the shit. Oh. <laughs> Why is that? My job was the rat catcher. Hmm. And what before that? Shoe salesman. <laughs> when you were like only 15 or 16? Yeah. When, when did you leave school? I didn't leave, I was thrown out. How old were you then? About 14. And never went back again? Mm -hmm. I took a, a course in, uh, for a year in college because they told me that I didn't stand a chance of passing any of the exams. So I 
well, just to prove it to myself, I went and took them all and I passed all of them. I've got a series of credentials. <laughs> but I did that, you know, just to prove to them that they were fucking wrong. Where was this all happening? Was this in London? London. And were you living with your parents the whole time? Yeah. No, they kicked me out at 15. At 15? So you've been on your own since you were 15? Yeah. That's not usual in England. That's that's quite common. It's common. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, your parents don't like the way you look, so you fucking move. We have one request here. Call Ooh. It is quite common. It's a lot, lot, and a lot of people you were, your friends were not. I don't like left home at an early age. Really, everybody does it in England. You have to get away from that family monopoly over your life as quickly as possible. Mm. And if you don't make it on your own, you ain't going to do it at all. Even if you live, live in London you, and your family is also living in London as well? Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> I don't have to live in the same house as them, mm. do I? I mean, that doesn't stop me liking them either. Mm. So, you, you know, you know that... Uh, adolescence that you go through, mm -hmm. it's, it's very relevant to go out and stand up on your own two feet. Hmm. Do you have brothers and sisters of the same age? No, they didn't follow suit and that's why they've got themselves nowhere fast. Is that right? I mean, my old man, my father, he never really spoke to me at all until the day I left home. Hmm. He was very glad that I did, not to get rid of me, but hmm. that I could do it. Hmm. There's a kind of a communication gap here between, like, uh, especially fathers and children in this country. Is that a common, a common thing in England? Yeah. Hmm. Do you know? Uh, I'm not telling you. <laughs> no way. <Vanity>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you and I, did you have any image of what you'd be at the age of 24 when you were 15? No idea at all. No way at all? No. I, I don't know what I'll be doing in the next ten years either. Huh. And I don't plan my life like that. It's, huh. it's very wrong to do it that way. You find yourself getting trapped. What are your aspirations then? To do what I want and to enjoy doing it. As long as I'm not hurting anyone, that's fine. Mm. I mean, really, if I'm... It's hard to be humble when you know you don't mean it. <laughs> I'm advancing civilization. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> if, yeah, so you know, when you were uh, in the Pistols, had you had some idea what sort of music you'd be doing next? No. You didn't know you... I knew the Sex Pistols was too limited, really. You know, there, there was much more in the world that I wanted to be taking part in than just that. How long was the gap between the Pistols and, and the uh, Evolution of PIL? Three months. And during that time, had you a concrete idea of what sort of music you yes. were doing? So I, wrote, I wrote a lot of Pill songs while in the Pistols. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do them. They, they couldn't cope with them. Hmm. What do you mean you by know, Well, they, they wanted me to just write verse, chorus, verse, oh. chorus type oh. things. Well, I wanted to experiment and have fun. I mean, that's what music should be. You know, it's just a release from your tensions. Well, I can't be limited by a verse chorus structure. I mean, it's not fair. So, did you actually assemble the members of Pill Yourself in there? And had you put them to the test saying, I've got this kind of music, can you guys play it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew they could. I mean, we couldn't, none of them, like, well, the first bass player couldn't play at the time. The guitarist, uh, he just got sacked from the clash because of the same kind of feelings. It, it, it just worked. I mean, we all knew each other as friends, and it worked fine. We all felt that way. And Pill is its an organisation. It's, an, it's more important, Pill, than any one individual in it. It's all about breaking down barriers. Don't let nobody ever tell you you can't do anything because you can. So, did these people leave of their own accord or...? Yeah. There's others too? Yeah. 
And it, really, it came down to just a matter of just keeping. like any company, people come and people go, but it doesn't stop the company from functioning. But why didn't they take the name Bill? Because it's mine. Yeah. My own creation. <laughs> yeah. So, that, so I, this is probably gonna overlap with what you just said. I'm sorry. Uh, you were basically interested in doing something else when you were with the pistols, something along the line. No, of I wanted to advance the pistols, but neither the manager at that time nor the rest of the group were pre prepared or could even understand what the hell I was trying to say to them. So you were pretty dissatisfied with the whole thing? Yeah, we all were. I mean, they didn't want to rehearse, they didn't want to do anything, so the whole thing fell apart. They even like booked themselves into better hotels than me, and I thought, right, fuck you lot. I've had enough of this. Mm. Mm. This is steaming up. The guy is part, but if you had never met up with Malcolm McLaren, you would have never had a chance to express yourself musically? No, no, no. If I'd never have met up with Bernie Rhodes, I'd yeah. never have had a chance to express myself musically. Although it may be a very unpleasant thing for you, I was wondering what you had to say about Malcolm McLaren, how you would size him up. Malcolm has a very, very intelligent brain. It's just a shame that he screws everything up through greed and just he's too selfish he doesn't share it with people and he likes to give himself total credit uh, and that's not right I mean I've like he's I've been in and out of the courts with him over the sex pistols over the last five years and he just there's no leeway in him he just I mean, he, he claimed the name Johnny Rotten. He said it was his property. I had to go to court to fight that one. He claimed he wrote all the songs. I had to go to court to fight that one. I mean, I've won them all, mm. and I will keep on winning because I'm right. Mm. But he's, he's just being trivial. He's, he's very much like that. Well, without having any part in it whatsoever, he's saying that he wrote No, you song. see, British law is... Possession is nine-tenths of the law. So you have to go to court to prove the bloody bleeding obvious. But even though you know... Even, that though, even though his name isn't on the copyright, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's still saying it to this very day. <laughs> I mean, I'll pick up a magazine and he'll be, like, ranting and raving about how he wrote Anarchy in the UK. <laughs> and it's nonsense. <laughs> and, of course, he's in the, about the African music. Oh, wow, I mean, look how he's ripped off all that, right? <laughs> you know, he hasn't... He's nothing to do with the music on any single track on any of those things. <laughs> Have you heard the new album? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> what's, what's bad about it? It's... Well, it just is like a mumbo-jumbo of loosely played bad ideas, you know, <laughs> with a lot of people getting ripped off left, right and centre, <laughs> and him running away with the credits. <laughs> What do you think will happen to a guy I think it will sell a lot, because people are generally very silly like that. You know, it's the gimmick they go for, and it is very gimmicky. Hmm. You know, you know it, it didn't even arrange the music. It was all done by, like, Trevor Horn, the producer, mm -hmm. and Thomas Dolby. Thomas Dolby was in Yeah. Name. Is that right? Yeah. Malcolm McClure's tied up with Thomas Dolby. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, no. Did Joe Strummer, what, uh, how would you sum him up? Joe's all right, but he takes his life too serious, and because I don't like his music, he thinks that means I don't like him. Mm. I've tried to explain to him that that's not the case, mm. but ego, I suppose, got in the way, so fuck him. Mm. You'll find that with a lot of musicians, they're very snobby. All they like to talk about is their own fucking shit. Mm. You know, mm. your job should not get in the way. Mm. So it seems like you're on pretty personal terms with a lot of these. Well, yeah. Mm. I thought that I knew Joe Strummer when he was a country and western singer. Is that right? Yes. Huh. That was right before the clash. Yeah. Uh -huh. When well, he used to. Uh,
What is it? Keys to your heart? Dreadful. Really, just dreadful. But no worse than what he's doing now. Uh oh. <laughs> How about you know Paul Weller? I don't know him very well. I, mean, a, I know him briefly. He's just very quiet. Mm -hmm. He's very quiet. Who, who are some of your other contemporaries, people you started off with, who have come to, to the same stature as you? I don't, I mean, I don't know, do I? Can you tell me? Name me someone. Well, I mean, there was a whole sort of movement. Captain Sensible is as mad as he fucking appears to be. He really is gone. Sensible. He's a nut. Hmm. Are you still on... on yeah, terms of yeah. people? Yeah. But you're in, located in New York now. Uh-huh. I have to be. It seems like there's sort of a big move to New York these days. A lot of people are... Now there is. When I first went there, there wasn't. I mean, you know, there's very few English people in New York. If, if English musicians do move to America, it's straight to L.A., you know, mm -hmm. the swimming pool. Yeah, and the cold game. Yeah. Oh. Well, I went to New York. Hmm. And now there's a lot of English people there. I mean, I had to go to New York. The police were just too fucking against me. In Britain? Yeah. They were against you? Oh, yeah. yeah. How's that? Uh, God, I ended up in and out of jail every fucking three weeks. They busted my house to shit. Why? Suspicion. Of Suspicion of taking drugs. Suspicion of firearms. Suspicion of hiding runaway juveniles. Suspicion of planting bombs for the IRA. That was the worst one. I had a bomb squad at four in the morning. Tearing down the door, tearing up the floorboards, they took the bricks out of the walls, they, they just went berserk. Hmm. And then a week later, someone decided to hang himself on the same street, a couple of houses down. They decided to come in and hold me as a suspect. That's a suspect for getting hang himself. And you know, just it, it's like a. Uh, Intimidation, really. Mm. And then the last time they raided, uh, they did me under, under the Firearms Act. I had a can of mace spray, and uh, that, that got me six months Isn't that legal suspended. Then? No, it's totally illegal. You it's, have to it, it's a firearm in England. It's a projectile, therefore it's a mm. firearm, mm. therefore it's illegal. Was there any uh, justification or substance to the... Uh, no, activity. just no, no. Well, why were they so against you? The area I was living in, off the Fulham Road, is where they train the drug squad. Mm -hmm. So they raid all houses around that area quite frequently. And it's not just me. Uh, across the road was where a couple of Led Zeppelin's roadies lived. They got the same treatment quite mm -hmm. continually. Mm -hmm. But with me, there was a, a, a lot of maliciousness about it. Hmm. Why don't you just move to another part of town? I moved to another country. I moved to Ireland, where in 45 minutes, get this, I was arrested for grievous bodily harm. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to jail, and, I, and then I decided I'd had enough of Europe and fucked off to New York. And you haven't had been houseless since going to New York? No, nope, not at all. Not at all. And then there seems to be this big wave of British musicians. Yeah, New York. Yeah, there are. Just talk to Joe Jackson of these the Andy Summers of these. Yeah. There. What's what's the big uh, deal with musicians? Do you know how difficult it is to run a business in England? It's impossible. If your phone breaks down, it take a month for it to be repaired. If you want a new phone put in, it's a three month waiting list. <laughs> in New York, it's done within twelve hours, and that's it. And that's a long wait. It will be done the same day. Going in the morning and it's ready in the afternoon. In terms of musical standards or, or the quality of the music, do you feel that any Americans are like uh, making music of a similar nature? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what I like. Uh, the rappers stuff. Uh, oh. Because it has very good lyrical content that lasts. Which I like black music a lot. 
but uh, one thing I've always, always complained about is that the words are terrible and all about silly love and nonsense. But I mean, like what? The message was excellent. What sort of messages do you... Do you know, it's, it's about real life, just about how awful it really is to live in a city. That's, that's what the message is. Hmm. And, and you can dance to it. I don't know, so if people are thinking about how terrible it is to live in a city, no, what do you do? Listen, when you complain about something, you, you make it better. You state the case. There then is room for improvement. By pretending it's not happening, things just stay the same. <laughs> You ever I know it? this. This is my philosophy. I've been doing it all my life. It works very well, believe me. Um, do you think a group like The Clash, who incorporate political messages into their uh, music, have any sort of real uh, effective bearing? No, no. Because they don't deal with their own problems they fuck about in you know third world countries uh, like Sardinista that kind of stuff well listen if you're going to mess about with politics know what you're talking about because you're stepping on other people's feet there they made a really really tragically bad mistake when they went to Belfast see I'm Catholic but they went there and stood up totally for the Catholics but there's both sides of the border there like, that have grievances. You can't just stand in the middle of Belfast and say, get the Protestants out of Ireland. I mean, they've been there for 400 years. They're as, as Irish as you can get. You know, it's, it's don't do that. They were bargaining for the wrong truth. No. You know, and these people live there. They know their own situation. They don't need a bunch of outsiders walking in and... in. 12 hours declaring what's wrong with Northern Ireland. Mm. It's, you know, you can't do it. Well, their mistakes notwithstanding, you think anything else they They've been doing it all the time. Every time they get involved with politics, it's, they're more in involved with the sloganeering mm. of it that, than the actual content, and that's not good. I don't like that at all. Mm. you feel that sort of rhetoric from a lot of these bands? Yes, I do. And I don't like it. If there are any bands that are actually carrying out, uh, actually ha uh, have an, uh, an effectual bearing on what's happening, like doing in effect what the class are trying to do. Uh, Bob Marley did for a time, mm -hmm. most definitely. He did make reggae music international, mm -hmm. which is what it was all about. Mm -hmm. uh, Grandmaster Flash with the message brought black street funk music to a large audience mm -hmm. of all colours. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose that would be about it. I can't think of any more off, off the top of my head. What about in more specific terms, say in actual social movements? Like the Clash tried to like. Uh well, the Clash want to be like uh, you know reggae is to black people in England. That that's their ambition. But by imitating reggae mm. and imitating rockabilly mm. and imitating soul and jazz, mm. they're not getting anywhere. They they have no cultural basis of, of their own. It's like you know mm. they they're like robbers. They're like thieves in the night. They just steal and take from everyone else, and they give nothing of their own. Hmm. Harsh word. No, serious. I mean it. Hmm. So you feel the, the bands that are giving you stuff like uh, Grandmaster Flash, Bob Marley? Yeah, because it's it's from their soul. They they fucking mean it. Hmm. it you know, there's no like fobbing about. Hmm. They're not trying. To, I mean, if Bob Marley came out, say like a uh, Kiss, I mean, wouldn't that be dreadful? <laughs> What about so that's how I see the clash? <laughs> really, you know, it's that kind of incongruity. I don't like it. Well, you've covered like the third world with Bob Marley or Black America, which is often considered a sort of a semi part of the third world. What about for like white uh, Britain? White There's America? very few white people are proud of their own culture. See, but, you know, I respect black music, but I'm white and I want to make white music. 
That's how you get black people to respect you, surely. Mm -hmm. Not by imitating them. Mm -hmm. They don't like that at all. You know, it, the, say the message and that rap kind of music and that uh, wheels of steel, scratch music, as you know, where they f fucking dub the records live. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when Malcolm goes and fucking imitates that, as he did with Buffalo Girls, mm -hmm. he destroys its, its potency, he, he waters it down. How's that though? What, what Buffalo girls go round the outside. I mean, how relevant! <laughs> really? And I mean, he didn't even write the words. It's, it's off a, a 1930s uh, country and western song. It's, it's a barn dance song. I mean, really? He's done nothing. He's just insulted everything. the subject but do you have any plans to make promotional videos yeah we'll see what this one turns out like at the concert and if it's good enough then bung it out and you don't have to buy it that's my message we just get put on the market you wouldn't try to get on tv or anything? uh well in america that would come naturally wouldn't it mtv they grab anything on film but don't they grab you, know, you, you have to stop them actually <laughs> Is that right, they'll just play anything? Yeah. Would they play MTV on? is just like a series of commercials. Musical commercials, really. Will you have a top 40 hit? I don't know. Do you think any, any of your songs are...? I think they all should be. It should be, but you think it's possible? It's anything's possible. You, you can't predict that kind of thing. What about it's a white people? I would hope so. It would prove that I do have something to say to a large amount of people. I've heard you have greater interest in, in visual, like, like video. Do you have any plans other than to say something? Well, I did a film in Italy because of that. I wanted to see how a film was actually made. I did it with Harvey Keitel. That was great. A bloody good actor. Really. I really had to be on my toes for that one. <laughs> how did you get into that? Uh, they wanted, the Italians wanted a musician from Europe. Uh, you see, initially they wanted me to just do the music, but I pushed for the film. I wanted the part because it was so great. I mean, they just wanted this mass murderer. <laughs> I mean, how could I resist that? I'm up for that. And I took the screen test and I passed. I was better than... Uh, what's, let's see who ran for it. Dave Bowie, Sting, Steve Strange, you know. Oh, they were in the market for rocks. Rock, yeah, rocks. yeah. But I, wa I wanted to do this film as far away from being a snobby rock personality as possible. And I surprised them greatly. I did very well. Huh. So It's a damn good film. I was really shocked when I seen it, the end result. You know, it's none of that Dave Bowie like... This is my best side. Yeah. Well, is, is it actually I, up? I am just repulsive all the way through. I am the worst human being. Is, is the thing already been released then? Yeah, it will come out in England in September. It's out already in uh, in uh, Italy. Uh, after here, I might go to Germany because they want me to promote it. Mm -hmm. And I could do it the holiday. It's an all expenses paid tour. What's the name of the movie? Cop Killer. Oh, <laughs> and you are the little role. Everybody kills everyone in it oh. at some point. It's there isn't a nice person in it. It's like uh, it's a proper feature film, but it's, it's I suppose close to a Dallas type thing. Is it very bloody? Film? Not really. It's, it's more. It's more oh. like an Agatha Christie gone mad. <laughs> you had uh, as much money as you wanted uh, available. What kind of video would you make? Bloody good one. I know this is my limitation always. It's the story of my life. I don't ever have enough money to do exactly what I want. <laughs> well, so they gave Bowie a whole trunk of money. He went to Australia and hired the Aborigines. Yeah. And yeah. The yeah. I you wonder how much you paid them. Not a lot, I bet. Well, apparently they're professional actors, so...
Are they? Oh, what a liar. That isn't what he said in an interview, because I read it. Oh, he said they were just poor people off the streets. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Well, then, do you have any idea what you'd like to do? Like, with what you really want to do with video, where you want to go? With video, no. You're limited. I'd rather, like, shoot it on fucking uh, 16 or, or 35. I could get away with it. And then transfer it down to video, because you just get better film quality. Video is like, uh, I say, the Polaroid of the film industry. Good, fast product, but not Yeah, really yeah, but, you know... Mm -hmm. Well, you always say that your problem is financial limitations. Mm. What would you do if you had the money? It wouldn't be video. What would it be? Film. Just film. Yeah. That's your big passion now. Yeah. Huh. Once, once, you, once you're hooked, well, you can't... Uh, I know. Huh. I, I did a year yeah. studying video, and I got very bored and frustrated with it at the end. I, I couldn't anymore. I just just scrapped everything we did. I didn't want to use any of it. Is that right? Yeah. I heard you drag the video out during one concert once. Yeah. For yeah. That was during your video. Series. No, that wasn't a concert. Uh, this is a great story. <laughs> this is the Ritz riot. Yeah, right. Right. This is a. Uh, they asked us because Bow Wow Wow cancelled. I'd arrived that morning. They asked us that evening, would we fill in and show them how to use their video equipment because they just had it installed. So we said we would. So while we were setting it up, they apparently advertised over the airwaves it was a pill concert, which was wrong. There was, was no musical instruments on that stage other than a prophet and a drum kit and a record player. And so a bunch of people came expecting well, to hear Well, we, we used the split screen technique. We had a, a, a video console behind the screen and we were like just wedging in different pictures of what we'd taken and other pieces of information. It was very good, like I thought. I mean, they didn't know how to use the fucking stuff. Hmm. And then halfway through, the people got connected. Yeah, very. I mean, they passed bottles out, and you know, they were throwing them because they wanted a concert. But well, there was no way. Did you announce it to them, saying, "Look, we're not here to put on a concert"? Yeah, but I mean, they weren't interested in that. Is that right? It was uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. Huh. Rather mm -hmm. odd question. You're a producer, and you're about to get started on a movie, and your lead actor is uh, John Lydon. What type of a story would it be? What type of role? What? What type of a script would you would you want? I don't know. I mean, tell me, offer me one, and I'll tell you if I like it or so not. So you're more willing to accommodate than actually coming. Oh yeah, I mean that's what acting's about. What about actually getting into script writing? No, no, not for me. Too, too, too elongated and boring. I mean, there, there are professionals out there who can do it much better than an amateur like me. I, I know my limitations. I'm not a fool. I mean, that, that would be incredibly conceited to go write in your own film <laughs> and then star in it. Oh. Are there any screen tests coming up you want to get involved? No, no, no I've given up on that for a bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, I'm more interested in the music, you know. Mm -hmm. there was, well, I took the film because I was bored at the time of making records. Mm -hmm. And halfway through doing it, I realized I wanted to get straight back into a studio. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this basically a life thing, lifetime thing that you do? Sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I really enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. It's a shame I'm so lazy. Since becoming a professional musician, I really felt quitting. Oh, I don't think I'm a musician. Well, you I make money know. doing it, so that makes you musician. Oh, that makes me a musician. Hmm. Am I what? I forgot the question. <laughs> have you thought about quitting it? Yeah, I have. What discourages you? Two weeks after you make that decision, you realize you didn't mean it at the time. It's When you run out of ideas, it's very disappointing. Uh, you just stick at it. I mean, that, that's life. When you've hooked yourself onto something you really enjoy, 
it's a pleasure to do it. I mean, it's it's hard work, but I mean, fucking hell, it's the easiest job in the world. That's what keeps you in it. Yeah. We well, say that after two weeks. Well, I mean, it's not manual labour. Yeah. I don't have to work nine to five. Uh, it gives me the freedom I want. And I like to express my opinions. You say like after two weeks you change your mind, what's the... Boredom. Now what am I to do? Paint pretty pastel pictures. <laughs> and that brings you back. Yeah. You know, all the alternatives aren't, aren't exciting enough for me. That they don't give me enough release. The pressure in a studio to finish an album on time can be really, really, extremely aggravating. Yeah. It will watch me now. Just the, the whole uh, music industry doesn't uh, make you fed up. Now. Yeah, it's a, it's an uphill climb. That's for sure. I mean, a record company can really, really try to pressurize you very much to selling out, you know, to doing what they would like you to do, but mm -hmm. I won't do it. But I like, I enjoy the battle. Mm -hmm. That's half the fun. It's crappy individual. And it's, well, yeah. I mean, you know, if it's a particularly bad audience, that can be just as good as a fanatically good one. Huh. So what, you have complete autonomy have its say? In no, they have no say. No say we're whatsoever. None. How did you gain such uh... Through taking less money. Oh, really? I mean, you don't demand any large... I'm running a long-term project here. I'll, you know, reach the heights that they would love me to be at, mm -hmm. but on my terms, and slowly but surely, without selling out, without being a cunt, without having to wear glitter suits and platform boots, mm -hmm. I won't do it. Mm -hmm. I'll wear what I want and do what I want. Mm. That's where it's been, that's where it's going to be. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. So we're doing that. We want to get some pictures now. Uh, he's got a couple more things to ask. Apparently, we have to change things around some. We'll have a little extra time. And with your indulgence, maybe you can ask a couple last questions then. Yeah. I don't mind. If I could deign you with it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Toughest part of being a musician. Yeah. How you want to think back to movies? Too. What movies are some of your favorites here? Brent Hepburn. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's magnificent. Let's see what else. I liked Blade Runner. Blade mm. Runner. Yeah, because of uh, the scenes of uh, Los Angeles in the future were just excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it looked really good. I hated E.T. Mm. I liked Jaws 1. Mm. Uh, hmm, what else? There's a few others I liked a lot. I mm. can't remember them. Uh, the Peter Cook Dudley Moore film uh, oh. years ago, Beelzebub. Yeah. Oh, Beelzebub. What was it called? They made a, they made a couple of them. I'm not mistaken. The one about the devil. Mm -hmm. well, it's about the devil is trying to be also about me. That's great. Huh. So funny. Huh. Uh, Tony Hancock is... Let's see, what was that called? <laughs> Damn. The Rebel. Tony Hancock. It was a comedy. It's very funny. And a British film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about directors? Do you have any favorite? Or just go by movie? I go by movies. Yeah. I tend not to follow one director for too long. I don't like John Carpenter at all. <laughs> Grotesque. No, just not good enough. I mean, it's too cheap. Mm. And, you know, it's 42nd Street Playhouse mm. stuff. Mm. You know, not good enough for me. <laughs> that seems what be why a lot of people enjoy it, though, like this. No, I mean, I keep being told that it, it's genuinely frightening, and I, I laugh.
<laughs> I can't believe that they know what they're talking about. Oh, The Exorcist I liked. That was good. That was scary. Um, let me try and remember now. There's quite a lot of 1940s, 30s films that I really do like. They have such a weird feeling, films of that time, right? Those, like, very stagey, but very short, sharp, and to the point, you know? See, I like films where the dialogue, like, can go two ways, you know? It's, it's all smart-ass one-liners. See, that's what The Lion in Winter was. The more you watch it, the more you learn, and the more confused you get, because the, the, the double meanings and irony and... I love all those things. It's scripts, I suppose, then I like more than the film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of those 30, 40 uh, films back in Britain? All the time. Yeah, right. All the time. Because, you know, in the States, of course, you know, all night TV is nothing but 30s and 40s and 50s. So. No, you get it in the afternoon now. You're there. <laughs> but, yeah, literally all the time, I mean, the, the American culture, you're brought up with it. Is that right? Yeah. But... It's very weird, American films, you've given no idea what the country's like. Mm. You, know, right? you can watch Starsky and Hutch a million times and you still won't know America. Right? No indication at all. You get no idea of the hugeness. Mm. 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 Antonioni. Is that the one with John Travolta in, or was that Blow Out? Yeah, that, that was Blow Out. Yeah. Blow, uh, up was Blow Out was Anthony Hopkins, wasn't it? It was made, I think, like, nice. Late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, yeah. And the Yardbirds in the music. I didn't like it, but I liked the Yardbirds scene. <laughs> <laughs> He's smashing the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the Did you have any sort of... Musicians that were heroes when you were a kid. Alice Cooper. Really, <laughs> I thought I thought it was very funny live. Really. That was the kind of stuff you were into, heavy-handed heavy, heavy, heavy metal. No, I won't say Alice Cooper is heavy metal. Well, it was kind of that. Well, it was really heavy stuff. It was piss taker. Just it was like what the Rocky Horror. But did you see the film? Yeah, I've seen part of it. Same kind of thing. Parody. Yeah, mm. and Alice Cooper was a parody. Mm. So you've always had a, a, a sort of taste for the humorous yeah. parodies and yeah. not only movies but if music. If they're done with content and, mm. and you know, like they come across as they really mean it. Mm. Did you have any uh, like heroes when, when you were like seeing No, movie? I can honestly say I didn't. Is that right? Yeah. None at all. Huh. I, don't, I don't treat music like that. Mm. I buy records because I like them. Really? And, the rest is, you know, just waffle and rapping. Interesting. Sense. Think so? Yeah. I mean, that's the way it should be. I mean, what, black music. You never know who did what. <laughs> it doesn't matter either. Did you ever want to be black in your I didn't want to be black, no, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Well, Boyd Jr. said he used to lock himself up in his room and, and be like Mark Bowl and holding a tennis racket. I can believe it. If you were never like that. No, that's just silly. I used to like Mark Boland, though. He was very good in his early days. Yeah. Really? Bowie used to be quite good and all very early. Now, I, I don't know. It seems like people of our age, all the British people I've met, they, all, they like Boland, they like Bowie, and they love them like Alice Cooper as well. And of course, I would like Brian Ferry as well. Um, oh, early works of music were hysterically good. <laughs> they were so funny. Harris. I thought it was interesting. I know it's Steve Harris. Number Oh, eight one eight. Oh, two nine eight. Because it was so good. I really enjoyed it. It was about this awful, terrible, uh, stuck-up, snobby. Italian movie star. Uh, her career was nowhere when she married this uh, very good, uh, very popular scriptwriter. And then when her, her career took off and his drops, 
their relationship changed very dramatically. Mm. And he ended up despising, <laughs> loathing and hating her. <laughs> he was wrong, she was wrong for the way she behaved. It was really very good. Well, how did public... Uh, that's image. what it was called, the public image. I mean, that's what he couldn't stand. The public image wasn't the real her. That's, you know, the phoniness of it all. Why the limited? You know? Because of uh, this business, like, uh, this, this, so they used to call companies instead yeah. of cooperated, it'd be limited. Yeah. Not, not, not such a really in every once you refer to the Japanese I think it's answer worker answer something of that sort yeah yeah I really do believe it it's like everybody works for the whole of the country here and that's very good mm. but they're going to conquer the world <laughs> has your question changed at all since coming here it's reinforced, it's reinforced. Mm. It's for J in Japan it's very very efficient really and it, and that's not something to be despised as something to look up to uh, they take all these outside influences and they make them their own mm -hmm. and they're not seen as a threat to them it's very good for that mm. you know where the English are going downhill very fast because they cannot absorb outside influences mm. They feel threatened by them, and things just don't get done because of that. You've probably been to around a lot of cities around the world. What cities have you hated the most? Mm. Practically anywhere in, in uh, Sweden, Scandinavia, I can't stand. Because it's so bland and it's, it's you know, the food is so dreadful, and hmm. the people are very peculiar. I, yeah, they're very, they're like cardboard cutouts. It was quite pleasant. I didn't like it. The Scandinavian world? Uh, I don't like Belgium. I hate France. Hate France? Yeah. I can't stand this snobbishness. <laughs> we ever go back there? Yeah, briefly. Yeah. May I eat? Yes, of course. Hmm. You know, there's there's human beings there as well. I'm, I'm talking very general, and I don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you've asked me a very open question. Yeah. But it's, well, I care more about the people than the actual architecture or any of that. Mm -hmm. That's irrelevant to me. Yeah. I don't care if there's nice buildings or just square blocks. What have you thought of Tokyo? Huge. Bloody huge. Where is the center in this town? There doesn't appear to be one. That's the thing. Uh, there's no, there, is a, uh, there are a few centers. There's like about four or five of them. It's very much like London. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's, it's just huge. It's, it's just... Very, mm, mm. Twice the size of London. Yeah, must be. It's not very urban. I don't know what it looks like. It just looks peculiar. Uh, I always buy Sony Trinitrons. So I've got three of them. No, I mean, since coming here. Though. Oh, watching Japanese TV. Yeah. I, d I mean, I don't know what to make of it, do I? I mean, nice colors, but it's the adverts are even worse than American adverts and I never thought that could be possible <laughs> really the most peculiar things they do is a lot of it's very precious very precious do you know like Zorro chocolate bars and there's like wearing like the Zorro oh, mask yeah. and you see the slant eyes underneath it just doesn't look yeah. right looks ludicrous <laughs> Zorro yeah yeah <laughs> they're just very strange they don't seem to make sense and there's always always a little girl standing next to the announcer mm -hmm. going hi yeah hi you're very observant oh hi hi <laughs> <laughs> you're very observant yeah. operas the uh in a traditional garb is hysterical oh, yeah. <laughs> really 
you know, 15th century soap operas right before your very eyes. I find that fascinating. Apparently there's a lot more uh, violence in Japanese TV than in, in States or England. Have you seen anything like that? No, English TV is the most violent in the world. Is that right? Yeah, and it's the most sex orientated. It's is that right? Yeah, oh yeah, death a minute. You can, can, they, can they show tits on? Um, yeah, on they do frequently. Was it right? And the, the new channel, the fourth one, they swear all the way through it all night. And here's the next fucking program. <laughs> <laughs> they do it, you know, more for just the, the thrill of it all. Because <laughs> it's something new. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Thing, if you put, you know. Uh, rules and regulations on those kind of things, then, you know, you're going to get the innuendo of it all the time. If you outrightly just say, all right, do whatever you want, they get bored because they, they make fools of themselves. Very much like, say, cable TV in New York is nothing but swearing and tits and arse, and it's as boring as you could possibly ever hope to be. It, there's no fun anymore in it. You haven't found anything interesting on cable TV at all? No. Nothing. No, right? absolutely terrible. HBO promised to be really good, but it it ended up to be just films for old ladies. And, Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Mm. Nothing more than just an average program type orientated thing. Mm. You just basically negatively disposed towards the content of like the, the cable TV in New York, not just not the system itself. Not the system, no. I love the system. I mean, that's freedom there. That's the media. That's, I love TV. I like the idea of it. It's a great way of informing people. It's an opportunity that's being abused. And, well, I know the major networks have a hell of a lot to do with that as well because they don't want the competition. So as bad as the program can possibly be, the more they'll like it. You know, it's that's business, isn't it? Yes, it's very easy for uh, the major networks to hire the worst, ugliest, awful people they can to go and fill in all the slots and just make the whole thing look like a pile of rubbish. There's an English magazine called the NME New Musical <laughs> Express. <laughs> they that's in the, no, no, that's, this is a joke, but it's in the words to anarchy, it's not enemy, it's the NME. NME, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Would you have to take this? Would a contract with NME actually? Yeah. Run NME interviews. Well, well, I'll take it all back then, shall I? No, I've told them that a long time ago. No, so we can do it for them He says they have very good interviews on good art. Yeah, they do. They do from time to time. But the trouble with English journalism is that there's a lot of snobs and people that don't know what they're talking about uh, who condemn you with their silly little critique opinions that are just utterly irrelevant. You know, like they'll judge a live performance by what you wear, by not by because they don't like the audience, because the bar wasn't open, and there's been no mention about the gig. What was the music like? What songs did they play? And that's, that's, I hate that about English journalism. Are people that me the worst offenders? Or, or no, actually, they're, 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 they're the, the least offensive of the lot. But I used NME because, well, they gave us our first interview. Hmm. So it was, it was, it's tongue-in-cheek. No, it's, oh. well, it's a pretty bad situation over there. I want to ask you about journalism in uh, Britain. Seems to feel that there's a the pattern among the critics over there is to cut down, and criticize, tear apart any bands that make it. Yeah, and yeah. Do nothing to stand behind. No, the, they uh, don't. You see, what they do is they build you up and then they knock you down when you get successful. Well, why though? I don't know. Jealousy, malicious. malicious, just malicious, and it's it's very ugly and it ruins everything. I mean, they just make everything just so disinteresting. I mean, that's why English uh, music papers are not bought by a lot of people. Oh, they aren't? No. 
I mean, if they sell a hundred thousand, that's a big deal. Is that real? Yeah, and that's in a country of fifty-six million. <laughs> that's nothing. Is it real? Yeah, I think I, generally speaking, you know, really only people in the trade seem to buy it, just to read about themselves. <laughs> so, so it was just very snobbish and very inaccurate. The turnover is very quick there in terms of trends and whatnot. Does that have anything to do with it? That's sort of that yeah. Well, they, they're, they're partly responsible for that kind of preening. Uh, it's... Hmm. They just, they build you up to put you down, quite frankly. And if you don't make it, then you're their, their darlings and they'll love you forever. And then they'll despise the general human being race for, like, not agreeing with them. But the minute they do agree, then you're not their darling anymore. You know, you've taken that band away from them. It's, they love cults, the papers there. Are they all the same? The yeah, yeah, generally speaking. Are they any qualified? No, because there's no, there's no professional standard for a journalist there. They don't need any qualifications. Uh, generally, the best way to get a job as a journalist in England on the music papers is to know someone. It's all very clickish now. Yeah, very. And very snobby, and that's why all the writing tends to be a rip-off of the Lester Bangs way of doing things. Wants to, you say we do go on talking, but he wants you to do it vertically, horizontally. I'd love to. You don't know how much I'd love to. Great, my kind of man. We're going to take you out and bury you afterwards, of course. Really? <laughs> Just getting you ready. So the people in, in England read a lot of American publications then? More the Just, no, Lester Bangs was introduced via uh, Nick Kent. Oh no, we've gone over that kind of thing. Mm. You know, that sarcasm first mm. and mm. everything else after. Well, the sarcasm there has... But they like the English like so that because they're a snob race. Mm. It's all about condemning everything. Huh. I do it all the time. <laughs> but I know what I'm talking about. That's the difference. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> Here it's a um, I have like become an object dart. Yeah. So do they make? Have you ever become the, the serious victim of the uh, of their malice? Oh, I don't think they could compare with me. <laughs> Uh, what can they say? I mean, is my name is rotten. There's nothing you can say about me. You think of a damage uh, I was called nice once. You're kidding. No. <laughs> that was damaging. That I'm upset me. Do, do they have any, any effect on one like you? No, of course not. Musician? They're irrelevant. But they do, they do hurt a lot of people. How? People have a condemn. weaker disposition. Oh, By condemning them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they can be very bitchy. Uh, let's see if I can give you an example. Oh, yeah. Mm. The singer of Queen. Freddie Mercury. Yeah. They, the title of his interview was, Is This Man a Pratt? Answer, yes. Is that right? Yeah. And then they had a picture of him in tights going, Freddie Mercury bringing ballet to the ma masses. So, it, I mean, you can well understand that he wasn't very pleased. <laughs> Because, I mean, that's just fucking, that's just being a cunt for the sake of it. Mm. You know, there are people out there who like him, I suppose. You know, as, as a music paper, their job is to inform, not condemn. So I won't follow their shit system. I don't need it. I don't need to be slagged off morning, noon and night by a bunch of idiots that don't know nothing. Are you able to keep up with what's happening in Britain now that you're in New York? In I'd like you to tell us about how the uh, you got together the, the members for the current band. Very quickly. Uh, how long did it take you? Two weeks. And did you do this all in New York? Yeah. And who are they? Oh, God. <laughs> Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs>
If they, you've been asked for this one a few times. Yeah, but I'm going to have to build their names written out on all that. Okay. It's just boring. Uh-huh. Well, how did you meet up with them, though? Just like, uh, just through, like, word of mouth, because we didn't want to like, advertise in the papers and all that, because you get every cunt in the world turning up, so... Just word of mouth. Word of mouth. People we knew. And they were the best of the bunch. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like, what was your criteria for ch selecting the band members? Talent, rather than looks. Simply as musicians? Yeah, absolutely. And have these guys been uh, musicians for a long time now? Are they very, in what sort of bands? I'll have to ask them, I wouldn't be voicing opinions for them. Mm -hmm. Ask them individually. Mm -hmm. They've all got like, worked in the notes didn't they? Tenure tuck is a god knows who. Sorry. Yeah, more. Sign up. Are you going to continue with the same band for quite a while then? For the moment. They're being old tomorrow. <laughs> well, how long will this tour last for the time being? Uh, well, just that there's a few more gigs and a few things to do, yeah. We should be back in America by the 15th. And, uh, Will you do dates in America when you're back there? Eventually, yeah, but like straight into the studio to finish off our album, which is far more important. So that's basically the material is all set aside for that? Oh, yeah. This is almost finished. Oh, the album itself is almost finished? Yeah. <laughs> the back of, no, not the back of it, the rest of the band members were nothing but the uh, suits and the bow ties. Who's the idea with that? I don't know, uh, suspicion, uh, lack of education, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, uh, it's my first time here, and they're more curious than anything, and I, 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 can't, I can't explain it, it's weird, it's, I feel like I'm being observed more than anything. Is this the first time that's happened to you? Yeah, well, no, I mean, when I first started, it was very much the same thing in England. It's very much the same, you know, kind of like, God, what's he doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to jump into the audience. They all, like, run away from me like I'm about to kill them. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. But, I mean, uh, what other gigs we've done here? Uh, uh, but what the other towns? The other towns that we've done, I can't remember their names. Uh, but the wacky one, it was just total, absolutely out the crowd. They went bizarre. In Japan? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they went wild. Oh, was, it was great. Hmm. Or is it Nakoya? Osaka? Osaka. Yeah. Osaka, Osaka. It's in Tokyo. I feel the need to pretend to be more sophisticated. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's enough uh, information here. Uh, yeah, but they don't on. know how to use it. <laughs> the thing is, they they collect all these bits of information and they, 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 they don't seem to connect them together. Hmm. Well, that's, that kind of overlaps with what he was saying. He says they know that the uh, John Lydon from the Sex Pistols and John Lydon from PAL, and so they're never the twain shall meet. Mm -hmm. So they don't know which one they're going to come up against when he's coming. So I gave them both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've done Sex Pistols songs live here, mm -hmm. and that shocks them in mm -hmm. Tokyo mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. And, well, the last gig, uh, I don't think they even recognized them. You know, that mm. this was the totally pill audience. They, they weren't aware of that past. Mm. Whereas in the other towns, they were. Mm. Did you try to feature more of the Sex Pistols? No, I there? mean, I just did it because I wrote the songs anyway, right? Mm. I mean, and I thought they fitted in quite well. Mm. Uh, there's no great big philosophy behind that. Mm. They're my songs. Mm. I'm entitled to that. <laughs> that is it. That says it all. That says it all. Can I have a decent cigarette, for chance? Oh. Okay, I'm going to do that. What? Deliberately, because, I mean, people pay more attention these days to the clothes you wear rather than anything else, so to fucking come out in dicky bows and look like a cocktail jazz outfit was very, very wacky and good. And, and it like the, I mean the look on people's faces the first night over that they trotted out was 
they thought they'd gone to see Barry Manilow. Uh, and I liked that. But you yourself were an innocent in Nick Tech. No, you wouldn't get me in one of those. Why's that? Well, you would, but not in my size. They don't seem to fit. <laughs> I'm quite plump these days. You don't look it. <laughs> I'm plump by my standards. Hmm. Hmm. The stage arrangements differed from the album arrangements. What was the intention behind this? What? The stage arrangements differed from the uh, uh, album arrangements of the songs, that is. Oh, I mean, like, the whole thing about doing a song live is, is not to totally imitate the, what you've recorded on record, but to improve on it and whatever suits the uh, atmosphere at the time. I mean, that's, that's what the music's about, isn't it? Hmm. Surely. So the, the arrangements on stage are always a bit more beefed there's up. A loose, there's a looseness. I mean, we could go strictly according to the record, but mm -hmm. oh, that wouldn't be much fun night after night, and I'd recommend that the people buy the record then, in that case. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. stage, mm -hmm. Mm. It feels there's a bit more of a, of a commercial sort of feeling to the music this time around. Is uh, what would you mean by that? I'd say everything we've ever done is commercial. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You've always had that intention of, of, of making a very commercial product. I, no, it's idols to them and I will at my leisure. But I won't do them in America. Oh, really? <laughs> no, because they demand it there. You know, so you and, and that's why I won't do it. <laughs> Whereas you don't think they expect it here, so you do it. Yes, exactly. Is I won't right? ever be told what to do. Is that right? Yes. Huh. Because you don't maybe don't see it on the surface, but they're actually demanding that you play the pistol stuff here, probably. Well, I'm not aware of it, so that's <laughs> fine by me. <laughs> what you don't know doesn't hurt you. <laughs> Since you, I know. So you don't dislike doing the pistol number? Right? No, of course not. I just don't like to be demanded of it. Mm -hmm. right? I, I'm an, a very awkward person like that. I've all my life been thrown out of schools and ended up in jail for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I stick to my guns. <laughs> Question, but what were the pistols to you? Me. And only me. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. no. It was all right. I mean, I never thought it would take off, and actually it never really did until the day the band ceased to function, hmm. and that's when it sold in huge amounts outside of England. Well, yeah. It was d very misunderstood, and, you know, people paid more attention to the manager and his bullshit than the band who were actually writing and doing the songs. What was his part in it, though? Hindsight. Hmm. The press had a complete freedom. They could write whatever they wanted and we denied nothing. Hmm. There was no clever scheme. There was no scam. There was none of that bullshit that's being written. Hmm. You know, incidents happen, yeah, but you know, they're, they're not planned that way. You don't plan to go on television and swear because the man is so damn rude to you that that's all he deserves. Hmm. You, you, they were rude to you? Oh, yeah, very. And usually still are. Mm. Well, what, what TV interviews can be a real pain, you know, because they like to put you on the spot. Mm. And I can't be put on the spot. Mm. I've got a wicked mouth. <laughs> Where did this thing of make records to sell to as many people as I, as I can? I mean, <laughs> this, that's my business. Mm -hmm. if, if I don't do that, then I'm a fool. I don't believe in cults. Mm -hmm and all that nonsense and art for art's sake. Mm. Mm. I want to mm. get the message across. Mm. Did you won't go basically haven't changed the philosophy then behind no, what you're doing? No, of He's been given to believe that in the song, this is not a love song, you say you're going for a more commercial uh, type thing. It's, uh, it's done in a very poppy way, but the lyrics are well wicked. <laughs> what do you mean by that? read the lyric sheet, buy the record, and find out for yourself. Well, I think that's, that's what his interpretation is. He took it at face value. Oh, uh, well, no, it goes much deeper than that. Yeah, all my lyrics do. That's, that's what I write them for. That's why I spend so long on them. 
、俺の周知の非常に時間かかって、分かってないと。本だって表紙だけ。それで言うと、take the tapes from this Japan concert tour and make it into a live album. Yeah. When would that be?、Uh, we're recording tomorrow night show and then video it and record it live. And that will be coming out after this studio album that's almost done now. All before, whichever.、Hmm. You haven't decided yet. No. I mean, you know, we're loose about those kind of things.、Mm-hmm. Whichever's the best. Yeah, so what do you say? I hate limiting myself to schedules. I really. I can't stand it. I hate getting up at one time.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's actually going to do. I'm not sure what I have to do. Why do you、uh, want to use the Japanese concerts for a live album? Because we're here and we're doing them live. We won't have much time in the next few months to be doing any live stuff, so we might as well do it now.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to ask the ones that we did in LA before we came here. So it'd be really good just to compare the two things. I、mm. mean, us in America and us here,、mm. the audiences are very different. Oh, but the Japanese uh, uh, fans didn't quite know how to react to you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What do you They'll think? They'll learn. What do you think was behind?